TonyFrankyCetComeback.com So you like me in front of the camera so here I am again I mean me personally I'm very bored of this face but it's um, probably new to you guys so you'll get bored of it soon just ask my wife she's very bored of it now but anyway let's start by saying this video has no particular theme to it I'm just going to look at some cassettes that I think are interesting start with this one Da, da, da. This is an ICM interview cassette. So, voice grade rubbish. I mean, it's got a sticker and no sticker on the other side. However, let me play this song for you. Let me record something on this and have a listen. And then think about the fact that I sell these brand new for 99p. So you tell me, everyone wants brand new C90s, you know, the captures come out, the fox come out, oh I want a C90, C90. Okay then, a late C90, brand new for 99 pence, and as I demonstrate, these can sound good. See how many of you put your money in your mouth after that. The second one I'm going to look at is this, the Quantity AVX. And the reason I'm looking at this is because a lot of people in forums in my Facebook group have been seeing these crop up and going, oh, are they any good? Are they any good? So, let's find out if they're any good. Now, as you can see, these look very similar to the 3M SX, which I looked at in the last video. And indeed, you know, Quantigy is the amalgamation of 3M and Ampex. But there's a difference. If we remember this, this was a, a really well sounding SKC maker set and indeed if we look at the J card this is why it's better to do it on the chair because it's easy for me to see what's going on but anyway look at the J card you see that made in Korea yeah because we just turned this with SKC now if we look at the quantity the shell is different but if we look at the card itself it says can you see that made in the USA now this is quite a late cassette this is late 90s so hmm uh, made in USA I, you know at this time Memorex and uh, 3M and Ampex and uh, you know they're, they're outsourced they they weren't making tapes in America and yet this one says it is so it'll be interesting let's have a see how that pans out and this one this one is a cassette that is labelled for the discerning audio file. And when you think of cassettes labelled for the discerning audio file, what are you thinking? I bet you're not thinking a white Memorex type one, are you? But this is it, the Memorex Studio Tape for the discerning audio file. Hmm, I got this because I thought that was interesting. I mean, don't get me wrong, this is quite an attractive tape. Look at them hubs. Come on, quick quiz. Hubs, where are these from? Who made these? Not round holes, sort of squarish holes, sort of mimicking Sony. Those of you that said General Magnetics of Singapore, you're right, this is a Genmag tape. But I thought it was interesting all the same. So let's fire up a deck. Oops. And let's have a listen to these bad boys and see if any of them are any good. The truth. Okay, so I'm going to use my Iowa ADS950 today. Why this one? Well, although these are decent tapes, you know, they are average tapes. So I decided that maybe we should see what they really perform like in an average, if not good, deck. I mean, you know, I've said it before, the Dragon and the Revox, they can make anything sound good. So let's give this a real world test so that for those of you who are buying cassettes like this, you know, that might not have a top of the range deck you can get a good grip of what these are going to sound like so um let's start with the pmd so let's have a see what the biasing is like on this just reset it okay so so let's just uh give it a little remove some bias a little bit Turn up the level, 
there we go that's uh, that's based pretty nice that I mean that's uh, if you think again this deck is for SA got a little bit of negative bias removed a little bit of rec sensitivity but other than that uh, it's pretty stable and it's pretty much there so uh, that's good so the track I'm going to use this time is one I've used before it's a little ditty I've been noodling with that I am going to turn into a full-blown song at some point but uh, let's have a listen to how the PMD handles it Okay, so is that the greatest ferric I've ever heard? No, but again, take it into context. This is a 99 pence brand new C90. Does it sound good enough for a 99p cassette? Yeah, I think it does. It's not just for uh, voice, even though that's what it was designed for. 99p C90, what do you want? So, let's move up a notch now. And let's have a listen to the quantity AVX which has a very rough tape pack doesn't it you know not being funny yeah that that could be an American tape pack that certainly isn't a Japanese tape pack not having a good American tape packs but you know you guys outsourced your cassette production for a reason probably economic but anyway let's bias this one up let's see how this compares bias wise with the AVX so uh okay so this needs the bias adding Okay, it's a total level, but yeah, I mean, the, uh, the bison on this one's pretty good. I mean, it's uh, bob on in the centre and just uh, a little bit of level compared to the ferro-cobalt type 2 SA that this is biased for. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty close, pretty stable, so uh, hmm. Let's turn that off now and let's listen to Sleep again. Yes, that's what it's called, sleep.
right, well, wherever this tape was sourced from, or American, or it's American chat, whatever, that sounded pretty good that did. I mean, that was peaking at plus four, sometimes it was hitting plus six. That's a very, very nice sounding cassette. It says professional cassette. Yeah, I mean, you know, just like the uh, SX version, it performs well. If studios are wanting to knock some quick ferret copies out. Yeah, this sounded really well. I like that. It's a good tape. So, here's the mystery one, because I've never actually recorded on this. What I might do on this one, if it performs nice at the same levels as the... Um, the quantity there, I might try and push this, see how far I can saturate it, because this is for the discerning audio file, and this is a studio cassette. So let's, let's first see how this biases in comparison. Let's have a look. Oh dear, that's not a good sign. Oof. Right. Okay, so let's give it some negative and crank it up. There we go, right. Let's give it a bit more negative. Right. We're nearly there. Well, we're there, but uh, jeepers. Look how much negative bias I've had to give it. I've had to give it a fair bit there, so... Uh, hmm. Oops, let's get the zoom right. So, it's... It's about that. I'm going to give it a little bit more negative bias, to be honest. Okay, so not looking good so far for the discerning audio file. Maybe it's for the discerning audio file, because the discerning audio file will have a debt with calibration facilities that will be able to drop as much bias as you need to to get this working. But anyway, let's not judge it just yet. Let's judge it in a second where I play this song yet again. Like I say, let's see how it sounds. If it's sounding good and coping where it is, I might try and saturate this. So let's have a listen. I mean, no, I mean, if you look at this tape, I don't know if you can see this, this is, it's dark, but it's dark brown. It doesn't have that sort of bluey, blacky sort of glint about it that a cobalt dope super ferret does. I mean, maybe this is so rare because they made this and went, really, this isn't brilliant. And what studio is going to use this? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a competent enough cassette, 
but it ain't no super fat. This is no AR, this is no HFES, this is no SKC AX botherer. When I was listening to it there, I was cranking it up where it peaked around six, and the bottom head I could hear in the bass, there was a bit of distortion. I mean, at two and four, it seemed happy enough, but it didn't sound significantly better than the AVX, to be fair. Um, I mean, it's a very pretty cassette, but uh, yeah, maybe these are quite rare because they're not really for the discerning audiophile and they looked and laughed and left them on the shelves. Hmm. Hmm, how did I get there? So, what did we conclude here? Well, a 99 pence, brand new, late C90. You know, maybe if I put this in the higher end decks, it would have sounded even better, but in an average deck, to my ears, it certainly performs as well as a UR. So, what do you want for 99p? The quantity, American made, late, seems strange, professional cassette, but again, it sounded well to me. And the Memorex Studio for the discerning audio file, which I'm sure if I sent this to a certain audio file out there, we all know him, I'm not mentioning his name, uh, and said, here we go, put this in your Tamburg. If this is a candy cassette you'd buy, I'm sure I know what the reaction would be. In fact, he wouldn't put it in the Tamburg. So I don't know what they were getting at. But there we go. There doesn't always have to be a theme. There always doesn't have to be a conclusion. And this is the fun of the hobby. Cassettes that I've never used before, have a play with them, and like I say, in two cases, we've got two goodies. Don't get me wrong on this one, right, don't get me wrong on this one. If this was knocking round for a couple of pound, then I'd say, yeah, it's nice looking, it's decent performing, and if you've got a high-end deck, maybe it can make a lot more of it. I am going to have a play with this afterwards in maybe the Revox and see if I can push it further, and maybe it was just the Iowa had its limitations, but the amount of negative bias I had to give this doesn't board well. But the bottom line is, this didn't cost a couple of quid. These are really rare. This is the only one I've ever seen. I bought it brand new. It's got a crack case and everything on it, and it still cost me £9. So, a £9 tape? No, that's ARX money, and this is no ARX. But as a collector's piece, who knows? So, there we go. No conclusions, just some results. So, thanks again for watching. Do like and subscribe, and until the next video, don't forget to listen to the Retro Nouveau on Sundays, my radio show, bing. Thanks a lot for all of you that listen, especially those that you listen on Mish Cloud. It's fantastic that it's doing so well, and I'm really, really chuffed. So thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.